So, you want a laptop to edit video on. You did your research, you did your homework, you looked online, you asked for opinions in the various forums and user groups, and a lot of people were telling you, you have to get a MacBook, you have to get an Apple product to edit video mobily. Uh, no, you don't. Now, while MacBook Pros are great, the current ones with the new M series architecture of the chip and the GPU and the shared memory, you know, they're a little bit on the pricey end of things. You can get a comparably equipped Windows laptop for, for a dollar. So why wouldn't you? I mean, you can say, well, I'm a baller, I have 3000 to blow, I don't mind spending it on a laptop. Well, okay, but for that same $3,000, not only can you get a laptop that works just the same, but you can also then have money left for over to buy peripherals. You know, if you're using DaVinci Resolve, which is the editing program that we will be using in this video, you can buy a DaVinci Resolve coloring panel. Uh, you can buy a DaVinci Resolve editor keyboard. You can buy the actual editing program itself, the software, the software license. So, you know, would you rather have just like the laptop or the laptop and all of the peripherals and the editing software, you know, it, the value to me just isn't there on the Mac side. So that said, here's what we'll be looking at today. And here is a laptop that I highly recommend if you're looking to do brilliant video editing mobily. This thin metal beauty is the Lenovo Legion 7 Slim. And it weighs and the dimensions are about the same as the equivalent MacBook Pro. Now it's not a apples to apples comparison because MacBooks, they come in 14, they come in 16, and then you know you have 13 and all these crazy little tiny ones. Uh, no, this is a 15, I don't have a, you know, equal comparison because Apple just doesn't offer a 15. So we'll just assume that this is somewhere, you know, price point between the 14 and the 16. And just as a reference, the MacBook Pro that I had purchased was the 16 inch with the upgraded processor with more cores, upgraded memory, upgraded hard drive, and that's an important distinction. Unlike Windows laptops, if you buy a Mac, you have to buy it already configured. You can't, even, even with this slim one, uh, on Windows, you can take the bottom off. There's screws. You can upgrade your memory. You can upgrade your hard drive. So I bought this for a thousand dollars open box and it came with the ryzen 9 processor the 3050 ti gpu which was a strange choice but that's what it was and it turned out to be an excellent choice uh, 16 gigs of memory and a one terabyte ssd from samsung now that's what it came with at a grand so I can upgrade that to 24, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and I can take that SSD and swap it out for, you know, two terabyte, five terabyte, whatever. Uh, you know, and I can do all of those upgrades in this unit for a couple hundred dollars versus on Mac, when you spec out the higher grade laptops, you know, you're going from, I think the entry level for the 16 inch MacBook was around 2,500, all of a sudden you're at 3,500. So apples to apples, this is a $3,500 MacBook Pro, if you wanna see it that way. If you're, if you're trying to 
think of things on the same level. For me, I would rather spend $3,500 on not only the laptop, but everything else that I need to run the show. So with that said, let's open this up and see what we're looking at. Now on this model, when you open the lid, it powers the unit on. So we'll see how long this takes to boot up. It's fairly quick. This is actually the longest it's taken. Of course, you know, when somebody's watching you do something, it always takes longer or you can't do the trick. Now, it also has another cool feature, very similar to the new MacBooks, where you can use your fingerprint to log in. You don't need to type in a PIN or a password. No, nope, you just put your finger on there and it reads it and boom, you're ready to go. Now, let's go ahead and open up, oops. I am old school. I have the dongle. So let me plug this dongle in. Now, let's open DaVinci Resolve. And you can see how long that takes. It'll probably take longer now because we're watching it with the camera. But uh, let's see, it seems to be loading. Yeah, it loaded really quick. Okay, that's actually just a little bit quicker than my desktop. Hmm, I wonder if I should ditch my desktop and just use this. Okay, so let's go ahead and for the sake of this review, I wanna demonstrate the whole process. So I'm gonna start with a fresh new file and I'm just gonna save this as, um, you know, vlognosis video test one, whatever. Now I want to import some media. So I know there's three different ways to do that, but I'm gonna go here and import media. And we're just gonna grab everything in this folder because I know that's what I want. And we're gonna add that the frame rate is different from what the empty file had. So we're gonna accept that. And then, yeah, it looks like everything's here. You know, let's go ahead and I wanna show you, zoom out a little bit. Oh. Since this is starting from scratch, I don't have the screen set up exactly the way I want it to, that I'm used to. So it's a little, you know, it's throwing me off. But let's go ahead and uh, get our clips in here. Let's, uh, yeah, they're already sorted by date created. So I'm just gonna grab all my clips. I'm gonna drag them into the timeline um, in no particular order other than the date they were created. So. What I wanna show you is we have no caching necessary. The clips will play automatically. But basically, you know, what I was trying to get across was you don't have to, unlike some laptops and some editing programs, this is sort of a benefit of this laptop itself. It's sort of a benefit of Resolve, the two combined you don't have to sit around and transcode, wait for your clips to create cache proxies. No proxying necessary here. That's the point I'm trying to get across. So, you know, we'll just scrub through the timeline. You can see it's like real time. Uh, if I wanna play this random clip here, um, oh, it's upside down. So let's rotate that 180 degrees. Does it real time. Save the file. Anyway, you get the idea. Oh, and that loud screeching squealing noise in the background is my pet bird who apparently wants to be a guest commenter on this vlog today. So if you hear her chiming in, you know why. She, she likes to be a part of everything that the humans do. She wants to eat human food. She wants to go where the humans do. If I have my tools out, hammer, screwdriver, she wants to pick them up and try to use them. 
Yeah, that's just the life of a bird owner. So anyway, what else? Uh, so we've imported our clips. Uh, let's do, I don't know. I'll tell you what, since, let's see, the total of this timeline is 26 minutes and 37 seconds. I don't really make videos that long. My videos are typically, eight, let's go with almost nine minute video. So we have our edit here, nine minutes, splits the difference between my average blog of five to 10, let's say five to 15, I don't know what I do, but. So let's go ahead and add an audio effect. And what I usually do, I mean, this isn't all dialogue, but I like to add a dialogue presser, processor onto the channel. And we're just gonna leave it in the standard configuration. Uh, but we could also add something, I don't know, we'll add some echo here. That should, I'm, I'm just trying to create just a little bit of stress on a processor to show you what a real world example would be. Now, let's just say we're happy with all that. <laughs> echo, 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 echo. Let's go into the color tab now. And I don't know, let's do some stuff here. So again, I'm just adding things on for the purpose of this demonstration so that you can see we're, we're putting just a little more work on the system rather than it just being clip, 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 clip. We want it to do some sort of processing. So I'm gonna do a wild color correction, color grading, um, color mistake is more like it. Uh, oh yeah, you have to select. So we're just going to process all of these things really wildly. LUT, so, oh, okay, so we have our LUT applied, as you can see. Let's pick another random clip. Let's pick the first one, and I don't know. Let's get a film look LUT here, totally random. Apply that on here. There we go. Double check, the LUT is definitely there. So we have some color correction, color grading, color processing going on, just to add a little bit more stress to the system for the purposes of this test. Now, oh, and let's, uh, I don't know, let's edit something. So we did, I don't know, we'll cut some clips up just so you can see that that works. Um, I don't know, let's, what? rearrange some of these. Let's take these and put them over there, maybe. Uh, get rid of that white space. Okay, so we've done some chopping up of the video files. Uh, we've done some color mayhem. We've done some audio mayhem. So now, theoretically, for the purposes of our demonstration, we are ready to Go ahead and render this out. So I, I'm going to call this and I'm going to put it onto the desktop. And let's make sure our settings are correct. So obviously the most important one here is we want to select the NVIDIA GPU. And all the other settings for this demonstration are fine. Now, I don't know, we're one off from then. So yeah, you can still see that it's nine minute file here. And we're gonna go ahead and select render and see how fast this process takes. It's estimating 
Well, it keeps changing a little bit, but it's 2 minutes, 30 seconds, 240, 230, 215. But, you know, let's what I get from that is it's roughly going to be two minutes and 30 seconds per nine minutes of video for a nine minute composition of video. So what I get from that is that it's going to be roughly two minutes and 30 seconds to process, to render nine minutes of composition down here. That's not bad for a thousand dollar laptop. Not at all. So I think what we'll do is we'll let this run. I will speed up the video for the sake of you watching on YouTube. And we'll get to the end of this render when it is naturally done on its own. And we're done. Not bad at all. And just so you can see that it, in fact, rendered something where, oh, there's YouTube. So here's our file. All of our crazy stuff going on. Lots of nice echoes. Yeah. Done. It's that easy. For a thousand bucks and if you like i've said before if you really want to blow three grand you can buy all of your other gear that you need to do the jobs you need to do and just to show you that i'm not pulling a fast one let's go in and look at the specs of this system we have the rtx 3050 ti i didn't silently i didn't pull a fast one and, you know, silently slip in a 3070, 3090, whatever. So, and just so you can see here, we'll also go to the processor and there's our AMD Ryzen 9 5900HX with all of its beautiful cores. And, you know, as far as battery life goes, People say one of the major advantages of the Apple product is the battery life. Here, even with all of the hardcore high performance editing and rendering we've just done, we still have six hours estimated. So I would say battery life is a non-issue with modern Windows versus modern Mac, at least for the Lenovo Legion 7 Slim. Now there is one more demonstration that we should do, and that is the speed test that comes with DaVinci Resolve. Let's go ahead and run this and see. Not bad. Hmm. It's filling up as it runs its tests and it processes all this data. And Honestly, this, uh, this is not bad for a $1,000 laptop. In fact, this is probably, probably one of the better results that I've seen for the price. Uh, let's do, I don't know, HD. Whoa. That can't be right. There we go. Let's start that test for HD footage, HD Black Magic Raw. And <laughs> it's just off the charts. This is very good. So I would say you're good to go with this laptop. I mean, honestly, um, I'm happy with this for HD Raw footage. This is incredible. Um, yeah. Need I say more? And that about wraps up things for today's video. I thank you for watching. I know it's been a little longer than usual, but I hope that from my experience here, 
that you have picked up some valuable tidbits of information that you can apply to your life. And if I may be so bold, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button and share this video with your friends and colleagues. And let me know if there's something that I didn't cover in the video that maybe, you know, maybe perhaps there's a question that I can answer for you. Or if you have some advice for me or you want to correct something that you've seen today, be nice about it, but feel free to chime in. Anyway, thank you. I really appreciate your time and I hope that you find the video editing laptop of your dreams for a great price without getting ripped off. As for me, I'm going to take this little beauty on the road.